This is Dorset on England's south coast. A 90-mile stretch of shoreline here can tell us a lot about the evolution of flight. This is the Jurassic Coast. Its rocks are full of fossils of prehistoric creatures, including evidence of the first backboned animals ever to fly. But it wasn't until the 19th century that scientists started putting together those clues to form a detailed picture of one of the most dramatic periods in the whole of the history of life. And they had an unlikely ally, a middle-aged woman from a local town who used to come out to scour these cliffs for those clues. She'd come in all weathers, but particularly after there had been heavy storms, which might have removed some section of the cliff and so exposed specimens that no one had ever seen before. Her name was Mary Anning. She had an almost unbelievable talent for unearthing fossils. So extraordinary were her achievements that some called her the princess of paleontology. When you consider Mary Anning's status, a woman from a working class background with no formal education to speak of, it may seem strange that she acquired such a prestigious reputation. Until, that is, you see what it was she discovered. The Natural History Museum in London it holds one of the most comprehensive collections of fossils in the world. And those Mary Anning discovered are among the very best and the most important. A whole section of the museum is filled with her finds. Most of the creatures she collected were giant aquatic reptiles, fish-eating monsters that dominated the seas. But she found other things, too. In 1828, Mary Anning made one of her most sensational discoveries. This is it. It's a small animal, but its head is missing and its spine is missing. But what remains is fascinating. There's its pelvis, its upper leg, its lower leg, and there is its foot with its toes. And here is its arm, which ends the hand with fingers, except that one of these fingers is hugely elongated. It runs all the way along here. And Mary Anning probably realized what that meant. It meant that that long finger supported a wing. And as more specimens were discovered, it was realized that this was certainly a reptile with a wing, so it was called pterosaur, winged lizard. Mary Anning had found the blueprint for the first large animals ever to fly, a creature that set the pattern for a whole new phase of aerial evolution. 